was expecting a lot more but the thing that she plopped at the top of her hair cheapens the look I've seen that hair and those claws on other looks For those of you who do not recognize me, my name is Neon Noir. I am a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, or normally I would be in drag, but I've been very busy, and so this video is coming in very late, and I didn't have time to get into drag. I was on holiday, I did a competition, there was a little bit of drama, but we are over that, and we are getting back into our regular scheduled programming. So today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 16, the grand finale. That is right, it is the grand finale, and we are naming a winner of Season 16. And so all the queens are back to give us their grand finale eleganza. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Hershey Le Courgette, and Hershey Le Courgette is coming out in this beautiful sequence gown with the little shoulder details. She's paired with blue earrings and this beautiful coiffed hair with blue rhinestones all over it, and my god, does Hershey look great. I will say that once you are the first queen eliminated, you definitely want to come back to this reunion with a bang, and with a bang, Hershey did. She came out, and I was like, wow. Wow, I honestly thought that she was Sakura for a moment uh, just because of the blue color, but blue definitely suits Hershey as well. If this is the drag that she was going to be giving us on the show, I kind of wish she would have stuck around a little bit longer because this is exceptional. This is the type of drag I like to see at a finale. It feels elegant. It feels sophisticated. It really feels special and it, she, and it really feels like she is giving you a taste of what we missed. All in all, this is fantastic and definitely going to be a bum. Next up, it's Mirage and Mirage is giving you her signature Claire's elevated attire. She's coming out in this like really skimpy dress that's got these interesting cutouts all over it. She then rhinestone this with these like neon yellow and neon pink rhinestones. It is really giving you that like stripper goes to the Met Gala vibe. Um, and I think this is so appropriate for someone like Mirage. I definitely got the reference. I definitely got her style out of it. And I love that. But the part that she's done really intelligently is the hair. She said, you know what? I'm gonna give you this simple little dress. And so since I am giving you this simple little dress, I am then gonna give you this big hair and make it a hair moment, and a hair moment she did. All in all, I think this is the right combination, the right balance, the right amount of personality, and she looks exquisite, and that is why she is also getting a bow. It's a mandatory meeting. And Amanda's coming out in this mermaid style dress with these big poofy gloves and this big purple hair. I was so excited to be seeing Amanda because Amanda was actually one of my favorite queens. And I say favorite as in like personality favorite, but she was always lacking a little bit in the fashion department. And I've been following her online and I will say that her drag has improved so, so much. And so knowing that the finale is usually filmed after, um, I was expecting to see this huge glow up. And then when she came out with this, I was a little bit surprised because what I've been seeing from her online is better than what she was showing at the finale. And I was like, girl, what is going on here? So I did a little bit of research and I found out that normally the finale would be filmed one year later, hence the huge glow ups that these queens have. But for season 16, they actually only filmed it one or two months later. So they actually didn't get the chance to see themselves on TV and improve on the things that they didn't like. So that kind of explains this look from Amanda. So it is better, but not really the glow up I was expecting. In fact, I don't really like this look 
at all. I really feel that um, it is a little bit campy and not enough elegance. And I think Amanda can really do elegance if she put her effort into it. Um, all in all, it's not my favorite. I just think that it really just needs to be re-looked at. I feel like overall, it's got some really good pieces. You can see that you got a designer to make this dress, but it's just probably not styled in the right way. I think with some little bit more elegant hair, maybe a few little rhinestones, and maybe not with the poofy gloves and just like maybe a slick glove I think we could have toned this whole thing down a little bit and really give you that sophistication all in all not my favorite and unfortunately still gonna have to be a drab <laughs> next up it's Geneva Carr and Geneva Carr said you know what my name is Geneva Carr and I'm gonna give you a car reference with this outfit she's coming out in this little dress with this black and white checkered train she's holding her little purse in the shape of a wheel and she said vroom vroom bitches what I do like about this dress is that she referenced herself referenced her name she gave you that little signature Geneva Carr touch with the with the car references all over it the thing is, it is kind of okay of a dress. It's not my favorite. It's not my least favorite. It's kind of just meh. And from a grand finale, I am expecting a lot more. That being said, the question is, is it good or bad? And honestly, it's actually pretty good. I just think that this was maybe more suited for an entrance look rather than a grand finale look. Uh, that being said, it's not a bad look. It's quite okay. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, it's Megami, and Megami is coming out in this like red orange leather dress with these interesting cutouts. She's paired it with these black veil around her arms, this black beaded necklace, and this black hair. She's giving you a little bit of that like ooky spooky and devil vibes, but still giving you that Megami twist. Now, what I do like is that Megami has stuck to her guns, stuck to her style, and, and made it a little bit in that creepy look, which I really appreciate because I do like when queens do things that are their individual style, but particularly when they do things that are a little bit weird because I like a little bit weird in my drag. Now the problem I have with this look is that again it doesn't feel like a grand finale look. Um, I feel like I've seen that hair and those claws on Megami on other looks. I think the dress is really beautiful. I like the cutouts and with the nude illusion. I think the nude illusion matches really nicely but I missing that extra va 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 voom moment you know what i mean what is making this grand finale as opposed to anything else i do feel like some of the pieces like the necklace feel a little bit cheap and not as elevated as the whole thing i think again this could have used with some different styling some different editing and really taken it up a notch all in all not my favorite but still a fine look and that's why i'm still gonna go ahead and give it a soft bow. <laughs> Next up, it's Tsunami Muse, and Tsunami Muse is coming out in this multicolored dress that just shines as it walks in. She's paired it with this uh, black hair and this gold jewelry. Now, I will say, when it comes to Tsunami Muse, I'm still not sure what Tsunami Muse's style is, because every week she's switching it up, but she's switching it up so much that I'm like, what is your sort of rooted element? And in this finale, I'm still missing that piece. I still don't know who Tsunami Muse is style-wise, and that's kind of unfortunate. But that being said, let's get into this gown. I love this fabric. This fabric looks so expensive and uh, really beautiful. The idea of using this multicolored fabric on the runway, I think is so smart because it will catch a lot of light. It will catch a lot of color. But yet again, I have another queen that I'm questioning the styling. First up, she's got this like one hip thing that's coming on the side, which I'm like, okay, cool, go, let's go with this asymmetrical. But then she's got like this one, I don't know if it's a jacket or a sleeve or what's going on here to cover her left side. I feel like there's just too much fabric for Tsunami. I like to see a little skin. We need a little bit of peekaboo. I think this whole section on the left could have been removed and maybe just shown a little bit of skin to kind of give you that motion because we know Tsunami has the body to do a runway look. She is a skinny mini and looks fabulous so I feel like this is way too much garment for her take 
On top of it, she's then paired it with this hair, which sort of matches the shape of the dress. So I totally understand why she went with this hair, but it's like this sort of like updo thing. And I don't find that it's actually that elegant. I think this hair would have been suited for something else, but for this finale look, I would have loved to see her with something else. Imagine this gown with sort of like a French wave long hair, maybe in a red color. I think that that would have been really suited. I feel like the hair needs more like old school vintage elegance to it to hold this dress. Right now, the hair and the dress don't really match for me. Yet again, not my favorite. That being said, it is not bad in any single way. That is why, despite my critique, I am still gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Plasma, and Plasma is coming out in this super elegant champagne dress with these sort of like little patches of gold all over it. It's got rhinestones in the dress, and it is pleated to the gods. On top of it, she's got this hair where she's decided to take a lot of those gold details and bring it up to the hair. Oh my god, now this is how you do a grand finale look. Plasma comes out, and she's oozing in elegance. It all looks super sophisticated. Um, I love that she took the same coloring from the dress and brought it up to the hair. You can really see that she thought of the whole look from head to toe. On top of it, it's got like this a little bit vintagey vibe to it, which really works well with plasma style, but it also feels like modern and fresh so that she doesn't look like a copy of a Jinx Monsoon. She definitely looks like plasma. All in all, I think this is a really good look, uh, both for Plasma and for anyone else, to be honest. Uh, and that is why she is definitely gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Maya Iman LePage. And Maya Iman LePage is coming out in this silver dress with these sort of dangly, flowy bits to it. And she's paired it with this updo with stones in the updo. Oh my god, I did not know that Maya had this in her. This is what I've been waiting for all season. All season, I've been complaining a little bit about Maya, saying, where are her looks? Where are her looks? I've given her so many drabs. I actually started to feel bad, but then she comes back and gives us this. Yes, mama. That is how you do it. This feels like Maya's looks. We've seen her do these sort of dangling stuff. She's usually done it in these bodysuits that were really made for performance, but she said, you know what? I'm gonna take this idea and really elevate it. And elevated, she did. On top of it, she didn't stop with the dress itself. She added this amazing hair. This hair is sculptural and interesting, but also brings in the colors from head to toe. This is the Maya that I feel like we were missing all season long and seeing this makes me say I think she needs to come back for an all-stars because if she's done this in just a few months imagine what a couple of years will do to her because we already know she's got the lip sync abilities she was just missing the fashion all in all I love love I love this gown and that is why she is definitely gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Dawn, and Dawn is coming out in this white dress. She's painted herself a blue, but paired it with these pink boots and these pink feathers coming off of her head. And oh my God, this is such a Dawn look. This feels like Dawn Snow Princess, and it is really cool and interesting, and I like when things are a little bit kooky. Let's get into this look. First, let's look at the dress itself. The dress itself is quite beautiful and quite interesting. I think that you, the dress kind of gets a little bit lost in the overall look because of, of the way that Dawn has painted her face and with these other pieces coming off of it, but it is a great little gown. I love these little pops of pink. It really gives this just a position of color, which is like shocking, but in a really appropriate way. Most of all, I love these pink feather things that are coming off of her ears. They are grand, they are interesting, but they also feel elegant and expensive. Now, the part where you lose me a little bit is with the hair. I like this interesting hair updo. I think it's super cool. It's giving me a little bit of like that Smurfette vibe, which I'm not mad at at all. The part that I don't like is the hat crown thing at the top of the head. I feel that that's where you lost me a little bit. 
I feel like the whole gown had this little bit of this architectural feel to it and the hair does that as well. But the thing that she plopped at the top of her hair, I really feel like cheapens the look. It's really not needed. And all I'm gonna say is take that thing off and it would have been perfect, in my opinion, of course. At the end of the day, that is the only piece that I'm kind of iffy about. And because of that, it might not be a perfect score, but it is a damn good one. And that is why she is getting a bow. Next up, it's Morphin Love Dion, and Morphin Love Dion is coming out in this silver sequence, a dress with this a black updo and these silver earrings. Now, Morphin is uh, giving you that Latin J-Lo vibe, and she is uh, looking stunning. But do we expect anything less from Miss Morphine? Uh, Morphine has always been giving us gorgeous. And there's no exception here either. Now I will say that considering this is the grand finale, I was expecting a lot more. She definitely decided she wanted to do that sort of simple elegance and kind of give you a lot of that fish energy. But I felt like she could have done that with a little bit more detailing. This dress kind of reminds me a little bit of what Marina Summers did for her reunion look. But I do feel like Marina's had that little edge that this one is missing. That being said, at the end of the day, Morphin looks great. And if you look great, who am I to critique what dress you chose to go with? If you want to do simple elegance, do simple elegance. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and still give her a bad mama. Next up, it's Q, and Q is coming out in this uh, big blue dress with these big shoulders and this big long train. She's paired it with these tall hair with these spiky moments on it. Oh my god, Q said, you want grand finale eleganza? Let me give you the biggest eleganza. And I am not sure how I feel about her. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. She looks gorgeous, so there's no denying that. But I almost feel like this dress is too big for her. I love the whole idea of it. It really makes a statement. It really makes her stand out. Because she's got these giant shoulder pieces and this giant long train, even though she's wearing this big hair, it makes her head look teeny-weeny. And I don't... And that's the part that I'm like, oof, is it enough? So for me, it just feels like there is a proportions issue here. I don't think you could have gone much bigger with the hair. So normally I would say, let's just go bigger with the hair and make it a full moment. But that hair is actually pretty spectacular on its own and pretty big. So the only thing that I can think of is actually if these shoulder pieces were just a little bit smaller um, to really bring a little bit more attention to the face. I think if she'd done the hair in a different color and not blonde, like instead it should have maybe been blue with blonde tips as opposed to blonde with blue tips, I think that also would have helped to bring a little bit more color to her face and more attention to her face. But other than that, the dress itself is amazing. Like it is a grand finale dress and so many queens would die to have something like this in their wardrobe. It is spectacular. Ultimately, if I'm complaining about the size of her hair, then we got really little things to complain about, and that is why she is getting a bow. Next, it's Nymphia Wind, and Nymphia Wind walks out in this like giant banana and I'm like girl another banana another banana on the finale like really and this one looked really cheap coming out she then lifts up the little black thing and she peels down and I'm like oh my god another banana but this time she looked so elegant can you tell me how she's been doing bananas all season long and yet she still manages to elevate it to the next level. She comes out in this banana and it peels open and it is just spectacular. Her bodice is all rhinestone. Her hair is rhinestone. The banana is rhinestone. She definitely looks like that banana lady from the bananas, but like done in the most sophisticated, elegant way. And so just seeing her do this made me eat my words five seconds ago when I was like unsure about it. This is amazing and literally no words she ate with this look it is freaking fantastic literally no comments and a hundred percent gonna be a bow. 
next up is Plain Jane, and Plain Jane is coming out in this red sequins uh, corseted top with this big bustling red ruffle dress. She's paired it with this brown hair with little red detailings in it. As she walks in, you realize that this is not a corseted top, but actually a bodysuit that is fully encrusted in rhinestones. First things we have to talk about is she looks elegant. She looks sophisticated. This is really interesting and plain Jane looks great. The part that throws me off is this doesn't feel like plain Jane to me. Plain Jane has always had a little cheeky thing, a little something extra, and this one is kind of missing that. On top of it, I never really saw plain Jane doing red. I mean, sure she can do it, but I it was not been her color of choice all season long. I was expecting maybe a silver for some reason, but also not tool either. All in all, I was expecting a lot more body, a lot more elegance. I feel like Plain Jane has had a lot of outfits that were better than this one. The first one that comes to mind is really what she did for her Cher Bob Mackie look. That was so amazing and stronger than the, this one. And that's where I'm like a little bit struggling. Is it a nice gown? Yes, it is. No questions about it, but it's not the best I've seen from Plain Jane. All in all, I still got to give her her kudos, and despite my thoughts, it's still a great gown, and that is why she is going to get a up. And finally, we have Safira Cristal, and Safira turns the runway, and she is giving you everything. She comes out, and she's got this big blue dress, this giant staff, she's got her boobs out with just the littlest fabric covering the nipples. Uh, she's then paired it with this big hair, with this big headpiece, and she is giving you that warrior queen. She said, I came here to fight, I came here to be crowned, and I am going to make a statement, and a statement she did. This is the kind of drag I love. It is a rep point of view, but it's also interesting, it's unique. It feels grandiose to be a finale look. And it's also giving you a little bit of something we know from Safira, but also a little bit of something we don't. And the fact that she's pulling out new tricks at the last minute, I love it. The other thing that I love is the proportions on this. She gave you all the right proportions with the big hair and the big dress, but it all feels balanced. She's got enough skin showing to kind of alleviate your eyes so it's not as heavy as some of the other pieces we've seen, but it, she's also giving you a moment with this like thumping of the staff. All in all, it is amazing and it is definitely going to be a Bam. Woof! And that's been a lot to get through. And that is it for this. Oh, no, wait, it's not it. Uh, we got one more queen to come back, and that is Miss Sasha Kobe. Did you really think I was going to do this episode without talking about this look? You are kidding me. We have Sasha Kobe coming back to give away the crown, and Sasha Kobe is looking Freaking amazing. Sasha Kobe is coming out in this silver half dress that is sparkling from head to toe. She then paired it with this beautiful ornate sort of bra thing that is covering uh, her breast assist in just the right, most seductive way. And she's doing it with this giant headpiece that is really giving you the moment. I love when queens come back a year later to show you what they have done and what they're packing and my God, was this a look. I honestly say that this is one of the best crowning looks that we have seen in a very long time. I love this look. All in all, she definitely looks like a goddess, pun intended. If you had a guess, this is 100% gonna be a bomb. Okay, y'all, now I am really done. What an amazing runway. What an amazing season. It's so good to see all the queens back and uh, really showing the best they can do. Now let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Now I will not be counting Sasha Kobe because that would be a little bit unfair, but we will be looking at all the contestants. So my drab of the week has to go to... 
a oh. mandatory meeting. I know I really, really wanted to give her a fab, but she's the only one that I drabbed this episode. Uh, so it has to go to her. Uh, like I said, I really love Amanda and I really wish to see her back on an all-star season because she deserves it. And I think she's a freaking amazing queen. I would love to see her in real life because she's already improved so much. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Minfio Min. I guess this is no surprise. I love this outfit from head to toe. She looks elegant. She had a point of view. Uh, it felt everything and she just is amazing and, uh, and definitely worth the fab of the week. Woof. And that is it for this season, y'all. I just want to say a big congratulations to Miss Nymphia Wynn. Brava, brava for winning the season. She was amazing. And I cannot wait to see what her reign holds and what she is going to do next. Y'all, that is it for this episode. That is it for this season. What did you think? Who was your favorite? Did you, do you feel the right winner was crowned? Do you agree with my fabs and drabs of the week? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. So for now, it's going to be to the moon.